Stephen Greer uh, claimed that a skeleton discovered in Atacama region of Chile might be an alien. You reached out to him and uh, took on the task of proving or disproving that with the rigor of science. The result is a paper titled Whole Genome Sequencing of Atacama Skeleton Shows Novel Mutations Linked with Dysplasia. Can you tell this full story? The story was, as you put it, right there, correct. Reached out, got a sample of the body, did the DNA sequencing, then worked with a team of uh, two other Stanford scientists and uh, Roche sequencing group, Roche Diagnostics, and probably a total team of about 11 or so people. Um, and as is, as is standard in these kinds of things, the professors actually don't do the work. <laughs> The students do the work and figured out the answer. Uh, and then we helped them put together the story. Uh, and the story was simply that uh, it was human, 100%. I went into it thinking it was originally a monkey of some sort. Um, I got kind of excited a few months into the process thinking, well, what happens if it is an alien? Yeah. Right. Can you describe some of the characteristics of the skeleton that make it unique and interesting? Primarily, it had dysmorphias of the of the brain. Um, and so the first thing I did, actually, when I got pictures of it, I took it to a local expert at Stanford, uh, and uh, he was um, on the paper. And uh, he, he was the world expert in pediatric bone dysmorphias. Mm -hmm. the, he literally wrote the book. <laughs> And on this, because that's what you do. You go to an expert when it's outside of your field of, of interest. And he said, well, I haven't seen this particular collection of mutations before uh, or this, uh, this physiology before, but here's what I think it might be. Um, and he said, but based on the size of the, of the thing and the bone density, it would appear to be like six or seven years old. Now, again, that's the, that's the thing where uh, I think the lay public doesn't understand or takes a speculation like that and turns it into a fact. No one ever said that it was that age. We only said that the bones made it look like it was that age. Mm -hmm. But then we went back and looked for uh, genetic explanations of why things might look the way they did. And... If you, again, read the paper, it's very carefully caveated to say that these mutations might result in this. But what we did find was an, an unexpectedly large number of mutations associated with bone growth mm -hmm. in this individual. And it was just a bad roll of the dice, right? You roll the dice enough times with enough people born every year, and someone will roll the wrong dice all at once. So the sad part about it was individuals in the UFO community who wanted to think that there was some sort of conspiracy around it, right? That somebody had somehow convinced all of my students uh, to lie. Right. I mean, come on, you know, I, I, would lose my, I would lose my job, first of all, uh, and they would all be uh, you know, in trouble forever. Yeah, but also it's just projecting malevolence onto people that doesn't, I don't think exists in normal populace and especially doesn't exist in the scientific community. Yeah. The kind of people that go into science, I mean, this is what bothers me with the current distrust of science, is they're, they, they might be naive, Mm -hmm. They might, they might not, especially modern science, look at the big picture, philosophical, ethical questions, all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, they're uh, people with integrity and a, just a deep curiosity for the discovery of cool yeah. little things. And there's no, um, uh, there's no malevolence, uh, broadly speaking, in the scientific community. So, I mean, there's a bigger story here, which is. You know, there's a hunger in the populace to dis discover something anomalous, something new. And, um, you know, science has to be both open to the anomalous, but also to reject 
the anomalous when the data doesn't support it. Right. What What do you make of that? You know, walking that line for you because you're dealing with UFO encounters. You're dealing with with the anomalous. Well, people have said, uh, let's go back to the Atacama case that I was debunking it. Mm. Well, debunking is a loaded term. It sort of assumes that you were going in purposefully to prove something is wrong. I wasn't. I was just going in to collect the data. And, um, you know, I, I showed that this one was human. There was another skull that somebody had at one point. It was called the Star Child. They called it the Star Child skull. I said, you know, I looked at it. I looked at the DNA sequencing that they had done. I said, this is human. A end of story. Um, the people who owned the thing at the time disagreed with me. And then eventually another group came in and proved that I was right. And it's not about debunking. It's about getting the more spectacular and hyped cases off the table. I mean, the reason I got interested in it is because somebody was hyping it. Mm -hmm. And not because I wanted to disprove it, but because I just wanted to know. Mm -hmm. And thus, get it off the table, because it's usually the most extravagant things that are most likely to be wrong. Somewhere in the rubble will be something interesting. And so that's what you do. You get the, you get the, the, the dross off the table, and then somewhere in the data will be something worth real inquiry. And that, if you inquire deeply enough, will be extravagant as yes, well. Yes, exactly. And that's what actually excites scientists is to, I mean, you want with the rigor of science to actually reveal the extravagant. And so look at CRISPR as probably the most perfect example of that. These weird sequences in bacterial genomes all arrayed one after the other with these strange sequences around them. But when you looked at the sequences, they looked like viruses. And so how did they get there? And lo and behold, after you know a lot of effort and work, well, a couple of Nobel Prizes went out the door, but these strange things ended up having extraordinarily extravagant possibilities.